Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, I am going to be recreating what was voted number one hamburger in the US. This is out of 330. Nick's Cheeseburger from a little restaurant in Portland, Oregon called Stanich's. Let's get going. Now, before we actually get started making this burger, I wanna give a big thank you, shout out to a couple of YouTube friends of mine. They have a channel called Dave Roten. They basically do a lot of woodworking tutorials, making signs, showing you guys how to do it. They actually made me a sign and, and I'm tickled to death. Check this out. This hangs free. This actually comes off if you wanted to. This was a huge surprise and I cannot Thank these guys enough. Eric and Dave wrote, and you guys are cool. I will have a link to their channel down below. Check it out. It's amazing the things they do and they're showing everyone how to do it. So thanks again, guys. This is very cool. Anyway, let's get back to this burger. So Nick's Cheeseburger, a little restaurant called Stanich's in Portland, Oregon. And this, like so many of the other top burgers in the US, it's just very fresh ingredients, simple ingredients and the proportions are just right. So Thrillist did the study on this. They did 330 burgers, and I think it was like 30 something cities in the US, and this is the one that they came up as number one. And I am very excited to do this. I'll have a link to Stanish's down below, so if you're in the area, check it out. I know I am going to definitely want to check it out. So, burger patty, pretty thin patty. It's 80-20 ground chuck. This is a mixture of mustard and mayo, and I went with three tablespoons of mayo to one tablespoon mustard, and this is what I like. It tastes really good. It kind of reminded me of the old school secret sauce that Jack in the Box used to have. We have some caramelized onions here, just regular mayo, and the lost ingredient, the lost condiment, I call it red relish, red hamburger relish. I grew up eating this stuff and I had a heck of a time finding this. It's crazy, people didn't even know what I was talking about. So I'm going to have a link down below if you wanna try this the right way. And th this is also what is used on Bob's Big, Bur bleh, Bob's Big Boy hamburgers. It it's worth checking out and I think we need to bring it back. We're gonna go with American cheese, come on guys. Now American cheese, I always get asked, what's my favorite American cheese? And then I get bombarded with attacks on American cheese. Look at the label. If it says American cheese product, that's what everybody calls plastic cheese. I use the less plastic version. It'll say pasteurized American cheese. It doesn't say product in there. And this was actually invented in Switzerland. So for whatever that's worth, let's get going on this burger. First thing I'm gonna do is lay down two sesame seed buns, just regular old sesame seed buns. And this is the ballistic griddle that is basically designed for, you know, your gas grills. I, I just, I don't use gas grills that often. So I've found that on these type of dedicated grilling applications, this works really, really great. And I have anointed this griddle with a little bit of bacon fat. I have here some grilled onions. Some, these are actually caramelized onions that I caramelized in the house and we're gonna finish them up Gonna get them nice and warm here. Now we're going to lay down that burger and I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of kosher salt, not a lot. A little bit more. All right, as you can see, juices are starting to come through here. We're gonna go ahead and give this a flip. And I'm going to transfer this to a cooler side of the grill right there. Now we are going to transfer those beautiful caramelized onions to the top of this burger patty here. These look good. Wow. All right, nice toast going on here. And I'm going to spread on that mayo and mustard mixture. Again, this was three tablespoons of mayo to one tablespoon of mustard. Put that on top right there. All right, nice toast going on on the bottom bun. Place that down there. 
let's get some of that just regular old mayo going on here. Make sure you get a good mayo. And we're going to take some of that red hamburger relish. Again, the last ingredient here. Now what I have here is one and a half slices of tomato. I'm going to proportions here and some iceberg lettuce that I basically just sliced right off the head of lettuce. Lay that down. You can see the cheese is melting. Now Stanich just cuts their burgers in half when they serve them. Take a peek at this. <laughs> uh, nice. All that melted cheese. You can see those caramelized onions peeking out. And again, simple is oftentimes best when it comes to a really good burger. And I could just, I could list all the wonderful burgers that are just this simple. Let's try this out. Wow. Mmm. This is good. Nice juicy burger. So, first thing that really pops when I bite into this is that very, again, very familiar but almost forgotten flavor of that red hamburger relish. Where is it? It sure isn't around here, man. I mean, it took me forever to find it. But it's just got that kind of nice, I don't know, tangy, tomatoey kind of a flavor that you don't get with regular hamburger relish. The mustard and mayo mixture, again, it's just so simple, but you still get that little mustardy spicy flavor, but it gets really chilled out, kind of mellowed out with that, that mayo. Burger, I mean, it's not a thick burger at all. I mean, this, this burger restaurant's been around since the 40s, but it's, everything's so proportioned. It's, you know, the way they slice that lettuce and serve it onto the bun with the tomato slices on there, Everything is balanced, so you're just not getting something that's going to take away from the other ingredients. The burger is definitely the star there, the hamburger. But again, that nice, crispy, cool lettuce and the tomatoes. Very, very good. That creamy American cheese, guys. Again, it's funny. I, I know, I mean, everybody's going to talk about, smack about the American cheese. And I used to be one of the smack talkers, but... So many of the top burgers are using it. I mean, they've been using it for decades. And there's a reason why. It's just, it has a creaminess that other cheeses can't get. I mean, this isn't something I'm going to serve, you know, on a charcuterie plate with, you know, wine or anything. But on a simple, greasy American cheeseburger, it's tough to beat. Tough to beat. This is simple perfection right here. Dig on it. Let's take a look at the beer. So... I saw this at the store and I had never had this today. It sounded pretty unique. And I know, um, well, basically it's New Belgium and it's Juicy Watermelon. Let's see if we can get a picture there. And I've had other watermelon beers, like um, Ballast Point actually has a watermelon beer. This is watermelon with lime brewed. So I've had a sip already. Let's give it a go here. Wow. So it's an ale, watermelon lime ale. This is a perfect summer beer right here, guys, around the, the grill, because it is very, very, very refreshing. It's, it doesn't have any of that overwhelming, you know, a lot of the craft beers just really punch in the face, and you can only drink one, really. This is, I could see myself drinking a few of these. It's really good. Very, very crisp. This is good. I, I actually... It's blasphemy for me to say this being from San Diego, but I like this better than Ballast Points watermelon beer. Good stuff. Give it a go. Anyway, guys, this actually came about. A subscriber sent me this hamburger list, this listing of all the top burgers, and so I appreciate that. Um, Thrillist, you guys did a great job of picking the best burger. Thanks for the suggestions, guys. Again, check out Dave and Eric's channel. I have a link down below. See you on the next video. Cheers again.